Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained, and educated. So let's dive in. Hello everyone, this is Scott Lieberman with the Rideshare Guy. We're here with Khaled Naeem, CEO and co-founder of OnFleet. He and his two co-founders, Mikkel and David, started the company while he's pursuing his MBA at Stanford University's Graduate School of Business in 2012. Kala, you grew up in London and Dubai, going on to study computer engineering at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Then you moved up to the West Coast in 2011, and now you're based in San Francisco. Did I get all that right? Yep. All right. That's all true. Welcome to the show. All right. So we have. Thanks for having me, Scott. Yeah, it's great. We have a unique podcast, and we have an audience in the industry as well as drivers. So we're going to try to bring everyone into it. So if you could first kind of give us your, I guess, your elevator pitch, I guess, for the industry, let them know what On Fleet's about. Uh, sure. So OnFleet is a San Francisco-based uh, technology company that develops a software platform for last mile delivery. So uh, we help businesses manage everything from route optimization and dispatching to real-time driver tracking, proof of delivery, customer communications, and everything in between. Uh, and we provide comprehensive analytics and reporting to help our clients identify bottlenecks and scale more effectively. And we do all of this through a simple, intuitive web dashboard for the for the business, um, for the operations or logistics manager, and then there's driver apps for iOS and Android. Um, it's worth noting that the drivers first need to be added by an employer that uses OnFleet in order to use the app. It can't just be downloaded and, and sort of used to find work, at least not yet. Um, but we do have a free and open job board, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and yeah, today, you know, OnFleet has has grown over the past few years to power millions of deliveries a month for thousands of companies around the world. So we have customers across many different countries and across a wide range of sectors. So our customers are, you know, grocers uh, delivering grocery and fresh produce, uh, pharmacies delivering um, prescription medication, cannabis dispensaries, um, retailers, et cetera. Um, we work with co- customers like Imperfect Foods, United Supermarkets, Capsule, Alto, uh, Sweet Green, um, and many others. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about On Fleet. We're based in San Francisco, but we have uh, a few offices around the world as well. Okay, and what about for drivers? What should they know about On Fleet? Yeah, so the driver apps um, are the sort of top rated, you know, drivers have always been at the forefront of our product development perspective from, from day one. We want to make drivers' lives easier and uh, make their work less frustrating. We we want them to be able to kind of get through their delivery routes faster and, and with less friction. So our driver app our driver apps are a testament to this. Um, you know, thousands of reviews on on each iOS and Android with you know 4.8 or 4.9 star average ratings. Um, we have by far the best sort of in class app for for drivers. But like I said, they have to kind of be added by one of our employers first, um, and then they get a text message with a link to go and download the app. And once they've logged in, they can receive work from that employer, and they can actually log in with their phone number and work for for different um, uh, employers, different different companies that are using OnFleet as their logistics software product. Got it. So you're kind of behind the scenes. So if there's like a chain, let's say United Supermarkets of grocery supermarkets, and they want to deliver, <clears throat> you help them figure this out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we'd be, you know, the, the backbone of their delivery operation, but very much behind the scenes. We do have a customer facing component, which is just automatic notification. So when the driver is kind of going about their day, starting and completing work uh, through the app, the recipient is also being messaged automatically based on the driver's status and location. So they're ready and waiting when the driver shows up again to kind of help the driver uh, move about their day more quickly. So the, the customer is there and ready um, because of that automatic notification. But aside from that, everything is, is very much sort of behind the scenes. Okay, so you're all about making it more efficient. So let's, there was one on the site here, a case study from United Supermarkets. It looks pretty cool here. So let us read the quote here uh, from what United Supermarkets has to say about OnFleet. It says, OnFleet is a no brainer for any serious delivery operation. We are able to not only increase our delivery capacity by 50% using their route optimization engine, That sounds like a lot, (laughs) but also to improve on-time rates, makes customers happy, and customer satisfaction through accurate ETAs and real-time visibility. 
So I guess when I look through the case study a little bit, it looks like they were trying to do things on their own through Google Maps, which, um, okay, so they needed a professional type of solution, right? They're only able to do like two deliveries an hour. How do we keep the food at the proper temperature, all that kind of stuff. So that sounds like a big job that you had to come in and handle over there. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. They were doing things kind of the old fashioned way. And, you know, that's really the, the status quo in the industry. You know, folks are, are really using pen and paper, spreadsheets, phone calls, text messages, Google Maps to route quite a lot. And obviously there's there are more efficient ways to do it. So as as a business is really sort of ready to scale up um, and they they want to plan routes more effectively um we our route optimization engine can factor in you know delivery driver schedules uh, delivery windows vehicle capacities traffic data to automatically plan routes uh for for the drivers to kind of have the most efficient routes possible so uh united came along and we're you know looking for a solution to start scaling their in-house operations up and um, and yeah, we've been working with them for about a year now, a little over a year, and have helped them scale their operation up. So what's the size of a company, you know, we have industry listening that when does it make sense for them to partner with you? Like when's a little too early and when is it like, okay, this is the time that it makes sense? Yeah, you know, we, we see customers from a very broad range from, you know, those that are just, just about to launch and, and sort of, you know, haven't even started a, an operation yet to those that are already doing thousands of deliveries a day. Um, and so we, we can help in both cases. We generally sort of, um, you know, once a customer's operation is running, that's usually when we get involved when they're doing, you know, hundreds of deliveries a day and they want to scale to thousands or tens of thousands. And that's because, you know, at the, at the in the very early stages, it's conceivable to plan uh, manually. And if you're getting tasks on demand, you can sort of use, um, you know, re sort of repurpose chat apps and, and the like to to manage an operation that's that's really sort of small and, and basic. But um, when a business is kind of going from hundreds to thousands is, is sort of usually when we get involved. Got it. OK, so I'm going to throw a, an idea out there that Harry's kind of talked about on Twitter. And it seems to be a problem. I don't know if this is something on Fleetwood at some point tackle or maybe you already have where you have all these local restaurants. Right. And they're kind of working with, you know, these delivery companies and, you know, it's been a lot of press about how the delivery companies maybe take too much of a chunk out of their profits for like these independent restaurants. Is it possible for independent restaurants to like kind of group together and use a solution like on fleet? Like if you got 10, absolutely. You know, okay. Yeah. That'd be awesome because yeah, you see these smaller yeah. restaurants, like in one neighborhood, but they, they can't afford delivery driver or they try to use these services and it's like, it cuts too much. Or maybe it's like a few restaurants in a, you know, in a strip mall or something. So how would on fleet help with that? Totally. Yeah. So uh, that's funny. Funny. You mentioned that actually in our neighborhood here, I live in, in near North beach in San Francisco between sort of Russian Hill and North beach. And there's a, a, a company that just popped up out of nowhere in the past few weeks to help restaurants, local restaurants who are that are that are all really independents. They don't really have chain restaurants in North Beach here, and um, it is sort of they created this this uh, fleet to to do deliveries locally in the neighborhood for these restaurants during this crisis. And we, they came and started using OnFleet uh, recently, and I. You know, I didn't even know about this, but um, but it's yeah, you know, that's that's just one example, and obviously the restaurants themselves could, and maybe there it is sort of a, a group of restaurants that are doing this together, um, but that's certainly doable. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it would take some coordination. Obviously, they could, you know, they'd have to hire uh, a pool of drivers, um, uh, you know, or even just start with one driver and then get them onto on fleet, but then they would need to, um, to to sort of manage that driver's task list. And so all of it can be automated. We have a very robust API. So anyone with, you know, some technical chops can can build an integration where, you know, as orders are coming in, they're just automatically assigned to the driver that's, you know, that's closest to that restaurant, for instance. Mm -hmm. And they can set that up very easily. Okay. So we'll put it out there. If you're a restaurant looking for an alternative, <laughs> this might be it. Okay. Um, speaking of drivers, you have uh, something called the on-flight driver job board. Maybe you could tell drivers a bit about that. Yeah, so you know, early on in you know when 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 the coronavirus sort of pandemic started, we identified pretty quickly that there was this gap in our customer base 
Um, some were hit very hard by the pandemic, uh, B2B businesses primarily, so catering, laundry and dry cleaning and the like. Uh, but there were obviously, and, and there were obviously many folks sort of losing jobs in other sectors as well that were looking for, for gig work. And meanwhile, most of our clients were actually experiencing a, a significant surge in demand driven by shelter in place orders, shut down of, of restaurants, et cetera. And so this kind of differential was a clear sign for us to, to connect these dots. We sort of sat in the middle. And so we put, we just quickly kind of scrambled together um, and put out a free and open job board, which can be found at onfleet.com slash drivers to match those looking for delivery drivers with those looking for work. And it's, it's really quite simple. Anyone can sign up for either side of, of that equation customer or not. Uh, we have a few dozen companies signed up, I think around close to 40 companies and, and about 500 drivers that have signed up already uh, in the past few weeks. Excellent. And speaking of uh, the pandemic, um, this looked really cool, so I wanted to bring it up. On Fleet's donating its last mile delivery software to first responders and turning food banks into delivery companies. I mean, that sounds incredible. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we've obviously donated our, our software free of charge to dozens of companies across a few different, you know, a few countries around the world. We're helping with transportation of PPE. Uh, we're working, you know, we're working with Get Us PPE there and a few other organizations on that front, as well as Food Drive. So we're working with, you know, the SF Marin Food Bank, the New York City Department for the Aging and other organizations here to get uh, produce, groceries, or, or meals out to those that need it most. Uh, seniors, those with disabilities, I can't really sort of leave um, leave the house, um, and and obviously to homeless shelters as well. So you know, really, we're just playing a small role. I mean, the folks on the ground are doing all the work. It's kind of the least we can do to to try and help how we can during these challenging times. But it was kind of a no brainer at the beginning. It was just like, okay, what can we do? to help and that was you know we, we started getting this influx of um nonprofits and just folks kind of you know even just individuals just putting together donation drives and things that we we felt like we could really help them um scale those those operations out more effectively and so and today you know thousands of deliveries a day uh are you know that are, are being powered by on fleet for these purposes so it's, it's been really exciting to be able to help so would it be something where there's like a meals on wheels and this kind of makes it more efficient to like get the most meals to the most people in the quickest amount of time? Is that a, a way yeah, to think about it? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, those those types of um, food drives that uh, and they, they can plan the routes using on fleet. They get the work out to their volunteer driver force using on fleet. So the drivers are all uh, using the OnFleet app to, to kind of go about their day doing these deliveries and it allows them to track, you know, where everything's going, what's going on every step of the way and to see, you know, uh, post, post fact, like all the analytics and the data to identify bottlenecks and, uh, and to be able to just operate much more efficiently because these folks are seeing unprecedented demand for, for what they're doing. So they're, they've never operated at this kind of scale before. And so um, they, you know, they needed quite a bit of help to, to scale up efficiently. Right. Okay. I mean, that sounds great. I'm glad you guys are able to do that and doing it. Um, let's talk a little bit about, I guess, your outlook on the future of the industry and what on fleets places in it. And for me, this is fun because I like conjecturing about what might happen in the future. Everyone's thinking about that now, especially like changing culture, but also just like how you think this space is going to look like maybe a couple years and 10 years. Sure. Yeah. Um, so we're we're obviously strong believers in in the power of of a, a great experience to enhance the customer journey and and to retain and acquire new customers. This sort of this evolution in in retail started several years ago, largely driven by Amazon and to some extent by kind of the the new direct to consumer retail upstarts and to a certain degree by even you know Uber uh, driving this sort of on demand expectation. And I think this is still just the beginning, um, but but the coronavirus pandemic obviously acted as a kind of the ultimate catalyst that ex, uh, accelerated this reaction um, and this transition in in retail. So, you know, we started a, f a few years ago. We launched OnFleet in in 2015. So it's still 
just the beginning. Um, and we know that we have a really important role to play here in, in helping retailers figure it out in order to succeed in this new world. And we're excited to be working with so many retailers to do so. Um, we're, we're sort of, the way we see on fleet long-term is we're building the operating system for local delivery. Uh, and, and you know, today is a very powerful platform, but there's so much more that we wanna do. And particularly on the driver side of the equation, we're really excited to sort of be able to help drivers find work, uh, to enjoy their work and to make a living. And there's lots more to come here. I like it's an operating system for local delivery. So a couple of things come to mind. Um, so it seems like there's a triple headed monster like Amazon, Walmart, Target, like they do all the delivery. What about like the local places? You know, what about smaller places? How are they going to compete with, you know, free delivery, two hour delivery, same day delivery, right? Does OnFleet kind of help with that answer in the coming years? Exactly. Yeah, that's 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 what it is. I mean, we're we're here as one of the uh, kind of infrastructure providers to retailers to help them compete. Um, it's you know it's difficult for for everyone to compete on that level. Um, you know, the, it takes a lot of investment if you don't have tools like OnFleet. It takes a lot of effort to uh, to deliver that kind of a customer experience that consumers have have sort of grown to expect and. So we make it easier, us and you know, along with other providers um, in different areas across sort of the retail chain and the supply chain. Um, you know, we we're helping these folks to to be able to compete. Let me throw two more future possible things at you. I used to know a guy. He um, delivered organs, like kidneys and what, in his car, like the hospitals, or somehow there was an arrangement. He like had an organ in a cooler. It was. Like crazy. I, he was like the Uber of organ delivery or something. Very important job. I'm like, this doesn't look like the most professional way to do this. Is there a future here for OnFleet or someone in this space to be like, we need this, you know, very important life-saving things delivered. Like you said, you PPP is a start of it. Um, is there? Yeah. yeah. I, so, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I don't know for sure, but I'd venture to say that we do have some some folks delivering organs today on OnFleet. We do have quite a bit of um, medical type deliveries going on. I know it's primarily prescription medication, but we do have blood yeah. um, deliveries happening as well um, through uh, through a partner called Blood Hub and um, and a customer called One Blood. Um, so I know that it's happening, uh, and and I know that there are also like testing samples that are being moved around using OnFleet. Um, but org, org, I, I can't say for sure, but I'd venture to guess that, that, that yes, we are also moving organs around. So this is not just already. people getting their like, you know, apples and oranges. This could be life-saving stuff, It's not, right? yeah. It's, it could be life-saving stuff. I mean, we do, you know, food and beverage combined, you know, we have grocery prepared meals, fresh produce, um, uh, meal kits, alcohol. Those are, that comprises our largest and restaurant of course mm -hmm. our largest sort of overall um seg segment um but we also do a lot of pharmacy and cannabis um we do a lot of other sectors as well it's really not just you know the, the grocery but everything from electronics and clothing we work with gap to auto parts we work with napa auto parts um uh, data with Cora data, sort of document shredding services, all kinds of things. Really, we, we focus on any any time a business is moving goods around locally, sort of average sub, you know, five mile ranges. Um, chances are, on fleet can help. Awesome. Okay, it's kind of, I, I mean, I, I love it. Like the less, it just sounds like a more efficient way to operate with this less kind of, I guess, professional careers kind of a thing. Um, I grew up in New York City. It's like kind of in Manhattan. There's always like these guys on bicycles delivering everything, kind of to save time. This is like can bring this to every city, except maybe in a more efficient way. And you can obviously bring it in vehicles a lot more than you can on uh, on bicycles. But the idea has been around for a long time. But this is kind of bringing like data science into it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and we and we work with couriers on bikes as well, um, and many other you know forms of transportation, uh, even walkers in, in Manhattan and such. But and we also were able to connect uh, businesses looking for those couriers with those providers. So we, we have a feature within the platform called uh, Connections, which, which allows a retailer or a business to uh, outsource deliveries to those providers that are using OnFleet. So if, if, a, if a delivery provider is in our network, because they're using OnFleet, we're able to send 
uh, work their way through merchants and retailers that are looking to outsource. Got it. I'll throw one more feature thing at you because this is one that I think about a lot and bugs me. Um, transportation. So like everyone's like mass transit's the way to go, blah, blah, blah. But there's always that last mile problem, right? So I'll give you a couple of examples. Like in New York, there's the Long Island Railroad. Where you bring people from the suburbs into Manhattan, for people who don't know. But you still have to drive if you live in the suburbs and park your car in that little lot for the, the railroad. And in South Florida, where I am now, they just built uh, something called the Bright Line. I think Virgin took it over. And they're trying to connect Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, maybe even Orlando. But the problem is if you don't live within walking distance of the place, obviously, now you're either driving there or you're taking Uber or Lyft. But I don't know if they really have this figured out, like that last yeah. mile problem. Is there a way for on fleet or someone in this space to eventually figure this out, to make mass transit something where it's like, because by the time some people drive to the train station, they're like, I might as well have driven to my destination, right? That's kind of the issue. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, uh, and that's it's it's reminding me of du in Dubai also. Like, I grew up in Dubai, and I go back there frequently. My parents are still there, and they built this like monorail that goes from one side of the city to the other, all the way across. But it doesn't go laterally, you know, towards the the water, I guess. And so, to get there or to get from there, you have to take a taxi. So it kind of, kind of, I think, reduces the value, and to some extent, I wouldn't say it eliminates. You know, it it, it defeats the purpose, but. It does reduce the value to some extent, and I think that final leg or the first leg. Um, I mean, when it comes to delivery, that's that's what we that's where we where we sort of focus is between usually it's like between the warehouse or a distribution center or a store and the consumer, uh, and what happens you know before that during the middle mile, um, we don't really get involved sort of like you know B two B distribution and, and freight. Um, but I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's an interesting problem. I've always felt like, uh, you know, I think in the future there there will certainly be a role for uh, for ride sharing there, you know, continuing. I think drivers will uh, what we're seeing in some of these places is, is you know, Uber and Lyft folks kind of um, uh, shuttling people to these uh, to these hubs where they're then taken for the longer distance journey or from, from those hubs to the ultimate destination. So, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's certainly, you know, an area that, uh, that we'll see continued activity from, from the rideshare uh, companies. Got it. Okay, and I guess to, to wrap it up, um, thank you again for being on here. If you could talk about, I guess, some of the biggest challenges on fleet faces right now, I guess, for growth or just things you're seeing, uh, um, every business has challenges, obviously. So what is, what is out there for you guys? And, you're working on now yeah um yeah for us it's always i mean now you know obviously with with covid the challenge it's been challenging to to sort of for everyone on the team to be you know as collaborative as we were when we we're in the office to have routines like we used to it's sort of you know thrown everything uh out the window and in, in a way and just like made things it's just everything is is, is a little bit different so it's taken some adjusting i think we're we're there now and hopefully, you know, it won't be too long before we're back in the office, but that's been challenging and we're hiring, we're still growing the team and hiring when everyone is remote is, is a challenge as well. But one that we're pretty used to, I mean, our, our team is about a third remote. So we've been lucky in that we have had the processes and the, um, the workflows to support a fully remote workforce. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it is a little lonely. I'm sure everyone's in sort of the same boat where you know we're not seeing people very much and and just kind of waking up and rolling out of bed and sitting at the desk and working from home <laughs> i think that currently is is the challenge um but um but yeah long term it's always just growing the team hiring the best people that we can possibly hire to kind of to grow and to continue you know to help us build the company All right awesome well thank you Kyle. if anyone has uh wants to learn more check out on fleet dot com doing some really cool things and check out i would say check out those case studies for me looking at those like kind of brought it to light uh the stuff that you guys do and um yeah awesome work and thanks for hopping on thanks scott yeah thanks very much thanks for thanks for having me yeah. take care